What is a dark star? Dark matter, dark energy, black holes, black hole suns. Cosmologists sure do love their gloomy names, don't they? And we can add another one to that list with the hypothetical existence of dark stars. So, what are these curious objects? What kind of role do they play in the formation of our universe? What is a dark star? Number 4. Bright Young Things A dark star is a theoretical type of star whose discovery may help us understand how our universe came to be as it is. We think dark stars existed during the earliest days of the universe, long before our regular, normie stars turned up looking all fancy and damper. But contrary to what their name suggests, dark stars weren't exactly dim. Some could have grown to a million times the sun's mass, shining a billion times as bright. If you want to know what this would look like, just turn off the lights, take a torch and shine it directly into your eyes for a few trillion years. This method isn't scientifically accurate. We just want our subscribers to go blind so we can pivot to audiobooks. The reason dark stars are so-called is that their heat was generated using one of the most mysterious substances in the universe, dark matter. Dark matter is a hypothetical form of matter which is different from the ordinary baryonic matter that makes up you, me, Dupree, and that tree over there. Dark matter cannot be felt. We cannot see it. It does not interact with light. And nor is it composed of electrons and protons like normal atoms. The only way we know of its existence is because some guy in a bar told us. Oh, and we can detect its influence on objects made of matter, and light, and peaches. This elusive form of matter is thought to compose as much as 25% of our universe, with regular matter making up just 5%, and dark energy the remaining 75%. We haven't yet managed to establish a scientific consensus as to what dark matter is or what it tastes like. But the most widely accepted theory is that they are the most cowardly particles in the universe. They are wimps. Number 3. Cosmic Cowards Catherine Fries is a theoretical astrophysicist on the lookout for wimps. And before you get any ideas, no, she doesn't have a weird attraction towards simpering beta males. WIMP stands for Weakly Interacting Massive Particles, and Fries believes that these particles are prime dark matter candidates. If WIMPs exist, they would have come into existence swiftly after the Big Bang took place and their annihilation may have driven the formation of the universe's most ancient dark stars. In 2016, Catherine Fries co-wrote a paper on this subject alongside Tanya Rindler-Dollar, Douglas Spoliar, and Monica Valuri, entitled Dark Stars, a Review. The paper describes dark stars as being almost entirely composed of hydrogen and helium, just like our original flavor stars. However, while stars like our Sun are fueled by internal fusion processes, dark stars get their juice from dark matter annihilation, which would be a great name for a Norwegian black metal band. A dark matter annihilation event would produce photons, electrons, and positrons, with all of this stuck firmly inside the collapsing cloud of helium and hydrogen. Despite dark matter constituting just 0.1% of a dark star's stellar mass, this small amount is enough to power the star for millions to billions of years. The reason dark matter particles can do this, according to Freeze, is because they are weakly interacting massive particles, as she said in the first place. WIMPs can exist as both matter and their own antimatter, and when such things combine, the resulting reaction is one of the most powerful events in the universe, converting into energy with 100% efficiency. Number 2. Where are they? Despite having been created over 13 billion years ago, just 200 million years after the Big Bang, it is the opinion of Catherine Fries that some dark stars may persist today in the farthest regions of our universe. Whether this is true or not we don't currently know, 
But hopefully, when construction is completed on the James Webb Space Telescope in 2018, it may help us to find out. Or we'll have a giant expensive-looking paperweight. Either is good. The James Webb is the follow-up to the Hubble Space Telescope. And this is going to be one of the better sequels mankind has produced, like Terminator 2, Aliens, or Jaden Smith. He is the second Jesus, don't pretend you don't know that. Anyway, if we find a dark star working as we think it should, this proves the theory that it is powered by wimps. Hence, we've discovered what dark matter is, which we've been trying to do since the 1930s. Anything that's taken nearly nine decades to achieve qualifies as a big deal in my book. So what might dark stars look like if we find one? And if there aren't any left, what might these ancient objects have looked like in the past? Fries describes dark stars as diffuse and puffy, with a radius stretching between one and ten times the distance between Earth and the Sun. Their surface temperatures are also quite cool considering all the spicy hot hijinks going on inside with freeze pegging them at about 10,000 Kelvin, or 9726 Celsius. Also, a dark star's power is concentrated evenly throughout, rather than being focused at the center like your bourgeois fusion-powered stars. However, this description is merely an estimation of what dark stars would have looked like for most of their active lives. Unless there are a few left over, there's a strong chance we may never get to witness one of these dark stars in their original form, since evidence suggests they may have transformed into something else entirely. Number 1. Dark Star Black Holes If you want to search for dark matter out there in the universe, where would you go? The center of a galaxy? Inside a supermassive black hole? Yes, well done. How did you know that? Have you been reading my notes? Did you like my naughty little drawing of Harrison Ford? Dark matter appears to be abundant at the center of galaxies, and there's also a supermassive black hole at the center of every galaxy so far as we know. Therefore, 1 plus 1 equals 2. Dark stars may have been the seeds of all galaxies. The prevailing theory is that when the dark matter runs out, a dark star collapses just like any other star. But since these things are super huge, their collapse may have been enough to form supermassive black hole objects, which in turn drew in stars and matter to form a galaxy. In a process known as hierarchical clustering, dark matter drove the formation of structure in the universe by forming small, sub-Earth-sized clumps of atomic matter and dark matter. These clumps merged with others, and so on and so forth, until you have something called a dark matter halo, a spheroidal object made of dark matter alongside atomic matter. Within the earliest dark matter halos, the conditions were created for the first stars to be born, and within these stars, more complex elements were created, without which we'd have no complex elements today. There'd be no silicon, no cobalt, no dysprosium, and can you imagine a world without delicious tungsten? I can. My childhood would have been a dark time indeed. So, if these theories of Catherine Freeze are accurate, it seems we've got a pretty solid explanation for how many features of the universe came to exist. Dark matter helped dark stars form, which then collapsed and formed black holes. Subsequently, the gravitational pull of a black hole attracted a bunch of stuff that later formed into stars, planets, complex elements, and a full-blown galaxy. But what happens next? Specifically, what is the future of a black hole? What's that guy's plot resolution all about? We're going to explore this in our bonus video, The Death of a Black Hole which you can watch in our Patreon page at patreon.com slash strangemysteries. For a $2 a month pledge, which you can cancel at any time, you'll get to watch this and all of our bonus content, which goes deeper and darker into every topic than YouTube allows. If you don't want to donate, then bullshit. We know you wanted more. Strange Mysteries on YouTube and our Patreon bonus videos weren't enough to quench your search for truth to give you that sense of awe and wonder again, to go past what you thought was the end, to give you the answers you seek, but which only lead to more questions. 
That's why we just up the stakes. Chemicals of reality. Reality, consciousness, brains. What else is there? Ask yourself that question. Perhaps that's all there really is, but perhaps everything else is found within a place where these ideas, these things, overlap. Some thing, some place that is undefinable. To many people, altering certain chemicals in their brains produces what they would simply call hallucinations. In fact, what we're going to discuss specifically used to be called the businessman's trip, as one could enjoy it. Come down and put your pants back on in the time it takes to eat lunch. It wasn't taken seriously. Well, unless, of course, you started digging. And some people, including us, did. Already, though, to many people, this chemical is special amongst others. Very special. To them, it represents something more meaningful and incredible, as if it's the gateway to the next level of consciousness. The ticket to a higher reality barely explored by most humans. It is the entry point to a new reality visited by only a select few whose minds have become enlightened through the use of this exotic substance. For this reason, it's commonly referred to as the spirit molecule. But is its reputation as a mystical mind opener deserved? Or is it and everything it represents just a load of bullshit? We look at, investigate, and dive deeply into nearly all available research regarding this question from nearly every angle feasible. And in the course of doing so, stumble upon unexplainable patterns, correlations, and neurological evidence for a reality existing beyond this one. Watch this hour-long Strange Mysteries premium video, Chemicals of Reality, as well as many more to come by becoming an elite premium member of our Patreon at patreon.com slash strange mysteries.